Well, you guys got another video on how to stop Windows spying on you. Now, the other day we talked about the data collection from Microsoft and how they harvest all your data. But here we have a long list of IP addresses and sites that will be connecting to your computer to harvest that data. And it's quite simple to block it using your Windows host file. Now, as you can see, there is a ton of addresses here that Microsoft use for harvesting data on a Windows based operating system. So what we're going to do is go to this PC, then your C drive, then go into Windows. Once inside here, we're going to go to System32. And when we get to System32, we're going to go to Drivers. Once we get to Drivers, click on this one, and we're going to go to ETC. Inside here, you will see the host file. Let me just make this bigger so you can see it. So the host file is right here. Now you can open this up with Notepad, but you can't edit it in this way because it's protected and you'll need to do it in a different way, which I'll show you in a second. So here we have the host file here. And if we look at it, there's some information in here and you can see this sample host file used by Microsoft TCP forward slash IP for Windows. This file contains the mapping of IP addresses to host names. And you can basically add them in here and it will block those if you want to block them. I'll show you how to do it. It's pretty simple. So it gives you an example down the bottom there. But if you do want to add your entries in, then all you need to do here is we need to open this up as administrator. So we're going to right click and open up Notepad as administrator here. This is important because we need to navigate through Notepad. Click File, Open. And once you're inside here, you can now navigate back to that location. So let's go to our C drive, then down to Windows, then go back to System32 here. And then we're going to go to Drivers. And once we're inside there, we can go to ETC. Inside here, you'll have your host file. If you don't see it, go down to the bottom right and put All Files, and there is your host file. Click Open, and it's now open but we're running as administrator here. So now we can copy all of the addresses into here. Now there is a downside to this because you have to go through and remove some of the ones you might want to use. For instance, some people are that paranoid that want to block every Microsoft address, including Windows Store and Bing and uh, Edge and things like that. You have to be careful on what you're actually putting in here because it will block them and they will not open and they will not work because you are blocking the uh, loop back to your PC from Microsoft. So let's go ahead and open this up, uh, this document, and I'm going to copy all of these and put them in. I'll explain here in a second. You'll see there's some other ones in here that you might not need. So go through this one here and take them out. Now the guy at the bottom of that website has added in some information about some of the ones that will cause a problem with certain things. If you're not bothered about Windows Store, then leave it in there. But you, there you go. These are all now added in. And let me come down here and you'll see here, it will say this will block Skype. This will block Sync, Time Sync. This will block the Zoom and so on. So if you don't want this blocking it, i.e. the Microsoft Store, then remove the IP addresses from the Microsoft Store part. Otherwise, it's going to block it because this is what Microsoft uh, Store uses to connect. So if you want to use that, then obviously you will need to remove these ones right here. Now, again, there is another one down here saying this will trigger Microsoft antivirus uh, to say that you do have a, a, a virus on your system. So host file hijack is what Windows Defender will sometimes flag as a virus because it doesn't want you blocking their telemetry. So to save it, just click on File, Save As, and then you can change the text part at the bottom to All Files, and you can see the host file here. We're going to highlight it and click Save, and it will say, you sure you want to replace it? I'm going to say Yes here. This will then replace it, and we are now done. I normally keep a text file in there, with a copy of what I've got here, you'll see it up the top here. I keep that in there. So if it does get overwritten by uh, Microsoft, I will then put it back. 
But basically, that is now done. I can open this up with Notepad and you'll see they're all inside here. Now, remember, like I've said before, you only need to do this if you are concerned about privacy or you don't want Microsoft harvesting your data. And if you're one of those people that are not interested in it and it doesn't bother you in the slightest, then this video is not for you because there is tons of people that want to block this sort of stuff and there's people that don't care. So if you're one of those I don't care type, then you can leave this video well alone. But basically what we're going to do here is this is the location where your antivirus may detect that um, host file hijack. And it's not a hijack. It's basically a Windows way of basically saying that it doesn't want you blocking its telemetry to collect your data. So you, could, if you've got an, uh, an ESET antivirus program or you've got some antivirus program, you will need to put an exclusion for that location in there. And you can go to the, the, the actual program itself. Now, Windows Defender has one as well. So I'm going to go into Setup here, and there's a little cog here, and I'm going to go in down here where it says Edit Exclusions. And now you can put the path inside here. You can either add it in with the path, or you can navigate straight to it. Let me just go ahead and navigate this. It will be easier to show you. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the C drive and go to Windows. And we're going to go straight back to that same location. So after this, it will be System32. So let's come down. And then once we go there, we can go to Drivers. So click System32, Drivers, and then ETC. And there we go, ETC's down there. Click this one, and we'll leave this as is on ETC and click OK. And it's going to exclude anything inside the ETC folder. And we're going to click OK here. Now, if you're not using a third party antivirus program and you are using Windows Defender, then basically you will need to put an exclusion in there as well because Microsoft Windows Defender will sometimes say that your host file hijack has been happened. And it's because it's just uh, sending out alarm bells to you because it doesn't want you using it. If you want to add an exclusion inside Windows Defender, I don't use Windows Defender, but if you do, I'll leave try and leave a link in the video description. It's all over the internet on how to do it. It's pretty straightforward. You can see right here. Do a search for it. And all you need to do here on the 11forum.com, they have an article on there as well, which shows you how to add an exclusion in. Now, whether that stops Windows Defender from detecting it, is another thing I don't know, but I don't use Windows Defender, so that's not a big problem. Another thing you can do is using the Group Policy Editor to block out a lot of the concerns in the privacy and security section like I'm doing right here. There is a ton of group policies that you have to add to Windows to completely lock down the system and block it. All this activity history and all of these notification areas, these are all now turned off and locked and cleaned and there is nothing else that Microsoft can do here because I've stopped it. Now, some people might say that during the next Windows update, all these will be reset. They won't be reset if they are a group policy. And also, if you make a saving of your group policy settings, all you need to do if it did reset them, which I don't think it will, you will just need to add those and import them back in, which will take a second or two, and you're done. And you will now have a PC that is not calling home to Microsoft at every given chance. And again, you can use your computer with a lot less uh, data being sent back. And I just think it's a sad state of affairs that you have to do this today to protect your privacy uh, on a Windows-based system. But that's probably the best possible way of doing it. The other way is not use uh, Microsoft Windows at all. But again, that's another topic because there's plenty of other operating systems are probably doing exactly the same thing. Anyway, but that said, I hope this video helps you out. Let me know in the comment section below whether you're using anything like this on your system or any ideas that you have, and I'll be happy to read your comments. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support, and I'll catch you in the very next video. Bye for now. <music>